Welcome. Yes, welcome class. Today we're going to be going over cardio, also known as cardio, but for the purpose of this lecture, we'll be, go uh, we'll be using cardio uh, to understand acid and base strengths. I'm Professor Jeremy. And I'm Professor Amanda. And we hope you enjoy this journey with us. So first we'll go over C, which stands for charge. And so this will be one of the most easiest of the concepts to understand for judging acid and bases acidity. So first, when you're looking at it, you have to make sure the more positive the charge, the compound, the more, which will equal more acidic, while the more negative charge compounds will equal more basic. So when you're going over this, you can simply look at the charge on the molecule. So right here, you can tell we have a positive charge. We don't have any charge on the H2O, and we have a negative charge on the OH. So based on this, we can rank them in their acidity as followed. So this, since it has a negative charge, we can assume that this will be the least acidic. H3O positive, it has a charge, a positive charge, so it will be the most acidic. And H2O has no charge, so it will be in the middle. And so as we can see, we have a trend here for acidity. So when using C or any of these, it's important to make sure that all the factors are the same. So underneath, I've written the pKa values for all of them. And as you can see, as pKa uh, decreases, as pKa decreases, we can see a trend that the acid strength increases. So it's important to note that when an acid is an acid donates a proton while a base accepts protons. So in order to understand this simple concept and be able to apply it to more complex concepts you might find or have to solve, we're gonna do an acid dissociation reaction which, with each of our compounds. So as you can see, our uh, H3O plus, um, we're going to take this, adding, uh, we're gonna be actually subtracting subtracting a hydrogen from it, as well as with our H2O and with our OH. So within each of these, you can see in the first one, we end up losing this hydrogen and we end up with an H2O. And our formal charge on this will equal, we'll put formal charge equals zero. Now with our H2O, we're gonna be losing this hydrogen right here, and we'll end up with an HO, subtracting one minus the zero formal charge right here, we'll have a formal charge of negative one. Finally, we'll have our OH negative, uh, subtracting one hydrogen, which will be this one right here, and we'll end up with an oxygen all by itself with a negative two charge. Uh, one minus one, which will equal negative two. As you can see, with each of these, uh, molecules are most happy when they have a formal charge of zero. So with this one, we'll have the most uh, stable conjugate base. Then with this reaction, we have a negative one, which is in the middle. And then finally with our uh, OH, uh, with just ending up with an oxygen with eight electrons, we end up with a formal charge of negative two, which is our least stable and is most likely to form back to OH. Next in cardio, we have the atom. How big the atom holding the acidic hydrogen is will impact its acidity. Acid strength is really about the atom holding the hydrogen and what happens to the atom when the hydrogen is gone. So here are two comparison trends to look for. First, when an atom are in the same period, we look at electronegativity. So across the periodic table, acidity increases with electronegativity. Second trend to look for is when the atoms are in the same group, we look at their size. As you go down the periodic table, the size increases. If the atom is smaller in size, then the added electron charge will be concentrated in a smaller area. 
which will be more of a burden per area. If the atom is bigger, then it is able to distribute the charge across and thus the charge is less concentrated overall. For example, we are going to rank increasing acidity of the following molecules. We first start off by drawing the reaction of taking away a proton or a hydrogen. It turns out that all of the reactions end up with a negative one charge on the atoms. So because they all have a negative charge, uh, we have to use periodic trends. So we look at the periodic table and since they are all in the same period, we are going to compare electronegativity. So going across to the right of the period will be the most electronegative, which is oxygen, next being nitrogen, and carbon being the less electronegative. So the most electronegative wants electrons the most and therefore the oxygen is the most stable since it's the most electronegative. In the middle, we have nitrogen. Nitrogen is a little bit less electronegative, therefore it has the mid strength. It's weaker than the ethanol, but stronger than the ethane. Lastly, we have the ethane, which is the least electronegative atom because it didn't want the electron and therefore it was forced to take them and thus it is unhappy. And when an atom is unhappy, we consider it to be unstable or the least stable, which makes it most reactive. Next, we are going to compare HBr versus HCl. Since they are in the same group, we are going to compare their size. And remember that size increases as we go down the periodic table. So if we look at the periodic table, HBr is down here and HCl is right here. And size increases as we go down. Thus, HBr is bigger. If we draw out the electron shells for bromine and chlorine, we can see that there is 35 electrons in the bromine shells and there's only 17 electrons in the chlorine shell. However, we are looking at the size. You can see that bromine is much larger than the chlorine and thus it can distribute the negative charge better. Um, and the charge will be less concentrated to a single area, making it more stable even if there is a negative charge. For HCl, or for chlorine, it's smaller, and thus a um, more negative charge per, per area. And it can't distribute that negative charge as well as the bromine can, making it less stable than the bromine. And that means there will be a higher concentration of negative charge per area in the chlorine. So this will be a stronger acid and this will be weaker. Up next we have our R which stands for resonance. Now we use resonance in the cases where we can't use charge or atoms because they are both the same. Now in this molecule you can see that if we were trying to use charge they both have the same formal charge. Uh, as well as with the atom, they both are the same. So now we can utilize resonance to find out which one has a stronger uh, which is a stronger acid by using the resonance. So first, we're going to see uh, we're going to deprotonate both of them. So we'll have our OH right here, and we are going to subtract H from that, and then all what we'll get is an oxygen with a negative charge. Now when you do this with the other compound, you'll find that with this, you'll also have a negative formal charge. So we can look at the resonance and see that in this molecule, we have this oxygen right here. So therefore we can see that has a resonance structure and this will be able to share. So when we describing that, 
we can see that this has a partial um, positive charge and this has a partial um, negative charge. So right here we can see that this oxygen has two groups of electrons. Now we can see that this right here will be able to move one of its electron group from its electron group right here will be able to move one right there to make a pi bond and then since this carbon right here would have five connections which isn't possible we have to move this one of the electrons to this oxygen. In my being a double heading we can see that the resonance structure formed have that double bond. This will have the double bond and then you can see that these are equal. Now in this molecule we can see that the one with more resonance structures will be a stronger um, is a stronger acid as this is less stable and this is more stable. Now the reason why is because this oxygen right here compared to this oxygen, this oxygen has this Consider a formal charge as a burden. So this oxygen has this burden is unable to share. Well, compared to this, this compound right here, this oxygen is able to share the, um, the weight or the burden of that electron with this um, oxygen group. Thus, the more, a, the, the stronger, a, the stronger acid. And the weaker acid. Now consider in this equation, or these compounds, which one would be more acidic? Now when looking at both of them, you might assume, oh okay, they both have resonance structures, so they'll be equal in their stability. Thus, they will have an equal level of acidity. So when we're looking at them, we can see that when we have comparing resonance structures, when we deprotonate them, we can see that this oxygen both of these oxygen groups both have the same charge. Now when looking at the resonance, we have the ability with this one, we have this electron group going right here, and then this group has the ability to go here, thus giving us two resonance structures. However, comparing it to the molecule down here, or the compound down here, we can see that this oxygen has one, another one right here, a third one right here, and finally a fourth one right here. Now, when comparing molecules with different numbers of resonance structures, the, mole or the compounds with more resonance structures are more stable. Thus, they'll, have, they'll be the stronger acid. So we have four resonance structures. So this compound will be more acidic. And this one will be less acidic. Because this one is more stable. And this one's less stable. The reason why is even though carbon has a less electronegativity compared to this structure, or compared to oxygen, uh, having it's almost like carrying the burden, and having three other people compared to one other, or sorry, four compared to only two, is more helpful than having only two other. So, in conclusion, this one's more stable, more acidic. This compound is less acidic, less stable. All right, so for that compound that we saw with four resonance structures, I've written out each four of the resonance structures. Now, if you follow these red arrows, it shows you the movement between each stage. Now, when trying to find out which structure is the most stable, uh, we look at electronegativity and which compound is able to hold the negative formal charge. Now, a carbon is a less electronegative, so an oxygen would be more ideal as they are more electronegative and their ability to hold that negative formal charge would lead to a more stable um, structure. Thus, one right here is our most stable structure. Cardio, we have dipole induction. Electronegativity is the measure of how strongly an atom attracts electrons. Electronegative atoms can draw negative charges toward themselves which can lead to considerable stabilization of conjugate bases. This works similarly to resonance, but to a smaller degree. This would be like having a friend help you move, but all he did was pack a couple boxes. It's not quite as good as having someone actually help you, but it's still better than doing it by yourself. So there are two principles. Electrons withdrawing substituents can increase acidity 
of a nearby atom, which increases with electronegativity and decreases with increasing distance to the atom. For an acid to form, a stable conjugate base it has to be stable with that negative charge. To demonstrate this, let's look at these molecules after deprotonating them. The fluorine is pulling on the negative charge because it is a highly negatively charged atom. Whereas in the top one, the negative charge isn't being shared among any of the other places on the molecule. So since the fluorine has an influence by pulling on that negative charge, it helps stabilize that conjugate base. So this would be more stable. And this one would be less stable. since the fluorine is able to help with holding on to that negative charge. Thus, this is a stronger acid. Making this one the weaker acid. Proximity or distance affects how strongly an atom can pull on the charge of another, and it is typically one or two carbons away. So for this example, the bromine is pulling on that negative charge because of its electronegativity, making the oxygen happier, thus making it more stable. However, this one has more of an effect on the pulling of that negative charge because it's closer. This is on what we call the alpha carbon because it's only one carbon away. On this one, it's on the beta carbon, which is even farther away and has less of an effect on pulling that negative charge. The closer an atom is to that which it is pulling on the charge for, the more influence it will have, making that the hold of the charge more stable. These are found on alpha carbons, like we just exhibited, which are one carbon away from that one holding the charge. The farther away the electronegative atom is from the one holding the charge, the less it will be able to influence, making this one less stable. And this is on the beta carbon. So this one will be a stronger acid. And this one will be weaker. Finally, we are on to orbital, which is used when none of the previous were able to be help you answer the question of what is the most acidic compound you're looking at. So when thinking about orbitals, we have to do the sp3, the sp2, the sp. So when looking at these, you have your first sp3, which is around 25% S, and then sp2, which is around 35% S, and sp, which is around 50, which is pretty much as high as you can get. So when looking at this compound here, we have our compound one, two, and three. So when looking at them, you can see this one right here is sp3. And so when we put this through the reaction, we can see that it has two alone pairs. And because the s is not far enough, it's not the negative is not being supported, and thus it is a very strong base. However, on this one, we can see that this is an sp2. That's a two. And then in this one, we have S, P, all right? And so now looking at each one of this one, this one is semi, uh, semi more stable compared, or less, less strong compared to the first one. But finally with this one, with the SP being around 50%, the molecule isn't as strong and thus is more, or it's less strong. The least of them and therefore is the strongest base and so we have a trend at strong and thus is more or it's less strong the least of them 
and therefore is the strongest.